Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Mandy Grace, author of 10 young adult novels so far. I have been doing this thing for about a year and a half where I read one book on writing craft and or professional development every single month. And it's June now, so we have to pick a new book. So funny story, um, back in June I read a craft book, as I do, and vlogged some of that, um, and then never used any of the footage, um, and also never did an outro. So it's August now, the middle of August, mind you, um, and this is my June writing craft vlog that's kind of half-baked because there wasn't a lot of footage. but. There you go. <laughs> Enjoy it, I guess. These are the available options. I don't know that these actually fit um, in this specific stack, but kind of, so I have them there. But anyway, these are my options. One of my hedgy sisters recommended this one. Um, that would be a writer in my writing group. We are, call ourselves hedgies because we have a hedgehog theme. Anyway. Yeah, she recommended this a while ago and I bought it, um, so I think, I guess it's time I read it. Okay, I take issue with this, and yes, I had to walk all the way outside to tell you I take issue with this because there are people in the house, and we don't film around people, but anyway, um, I just take issue with the idea that Tolkien is the only person who, you know, has the right to put a glossary at the end of his book. That's just dumb. <laughs> I have read lots of books that have glossaries at the end, and I have never not found them helpful. So... I just find that stupid. I, you know what? The Stolen Kingdom has a glossary at the back, and I find it helpful. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with having a glossary, especially if you have a lot of terms and, like, foreign words or whatever that are just not familiar to readers. I don't think that's a bad thing. Everything else in this book so far I've really enjoyed, um, and I really like doing the exercise with the 75 questions on your character. Um, I couldn't answer all 75, and I definitely have some work to do when I go back to writing my fantasy series, which is not happening anytime soon, but when I do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, apart from really enjoying that exercise in the rest of the book, I'm just kind of annoyed at it right now with her like, you're not Tolkien, so you can't have a glossary. I'm like, I just, lots of people have glossaries, and I have never read a book that had a glossary at the end that I thought, why is this here? I don't understand why this is a bad thing. And as a as a consumer of a lot of fantasy books, I am I would say I'm kind of the target audience for this thing and I don't mind glossaries. So put glossaries in your books, folks. <laughs> uh yeah, so here I am a month and a half later doing the outro. Um I did learn from this book. I learned a lot from this book. I underlined things. I have books that I need to read now um, that were suggested in the book that I now need to buy and read um, because they caught my eye. Yeah, I don't know. It was a good one. It was one of the good ones. It was a little bit, I felt, um, at least in the first half of the book, it felt like I'd gone back to the days when um, I was reading craft books about two summers ago and none of them were like blowing my mind in any fashion. I was just like, okay, yay, I read a craft book. Um, and in the first half of the book, I was kind of feeling that way, but um, I don't know. As it got on, I started to definitely pick up things and learn different things. And um, some of my favorite things that I've been implementing already so far, um, particularly in my editing of the Robin Hood series, is um, the AR units, the action-reaction units within each scene. Because I often interrupt... Uh, the AR units, which now I feel like I have to explain now that I started this conversation. Anyway, basically, something happens, 
and then there's a reaction to it. But I often get them all, you know, jumbled around because there'll be something and then my character will have some, like, internal dialogue that's kind of unrelated and then there's a reaction to whatever the first thing was, but it's not like... They're, they're broken up and confused. Um, anyway, yeah, I tend to do that a lot in my writing, in fact. And now that this lady pointed out that it can be a little jarring, I do find it jarring every time it happens. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was one of the things that I, you know, took to heart and have been, um, implementing. Anyway, uh, yeah, there were several things. I learned from this book. It was a good book. That's what I got. Also, it was a month and a half ago, so it's not fresh on my mind, but it was good. In the future, I fully intend to actually upload my monthly writing craft vlogs on the month that they belong on. You got, um, July's in the right time frame, just not, not June's. It's, it's fine. This is the first one I haven't posted, and I still read a book, so I didn't actually fall off the bandwagon. You just didn't get to see it, but now you do. Or did, because this is the end of the video. Anyway, I'm rambling. The Legend of the Thief has published, which is crazy. My baby has been reborn as a new baby and is out in the world. <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird emotion because it's like, it's Lucy's Legend. It was the first book that I ever published. I wrote it when I was 17. It's only the second complete novel that I ever wrote in my entire life. Like, it... It just has a lot of, like, nostalgia and, and beginnings and, like, ugh. But now it's been completely rewritten and it's twice as big and it's, like, a whole different beast, but, like, still has those memories and sentimentality attached to it. But, like, now it has this whole new set of, like, writing in the hedgy house and, like, having, you know, my beautiful critique partner and, like, all these things. Like, there's two sets of nostalgia and, like, love attached to this book now. Which just makes it an overabundance of emotion when I think about it. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, wow, I did not mean to go on a rant there. All I was going to say is that it is available to purchase. There are ebooks on Apple, Kimble, Kimble, Kobo. Yep, mm -hmm. Kindle and Kobo have become one. It's fine. Um, all the things. There's ebooks everywhere. <laughs> and there are all. So paper bags, everything should be linked in the description. If it's not, leave a comment and I will link it in the description. It should be linked, though. I don't know what I'm doing. Tech is not where I am savvy, you guys. Or talking. Or ending videos. We're gonna stop now.